Hey, it's me. I feel like I look weird in this shirt. So I'm sorry if I look weird in this shirt. <laughs> Today I'm doing another art things to do when you're bored video. This is a series that I do here where I basically go through and demonstrate a list of different art activities that you can do when you're bored or when you're just feeling artistic. You don't have to specifically be bored, you know, whatever. The idea here is that these are fun and relatively easy things that can be done at a variety of different skill levels. You don't have to be incredibly creatively talented to do any of these things, but you could be, and you could still get just as much enjoyment from them. We're gonna include everyone here. Come on! Come on! You can be here too. I will say in the beginning of this series, I was trying to come up with ideas using household art supplies. As I've gone on, the supplies are getting more and more special. <laughs> you may have to do some shopping in order to do some of these things. You can always hoard. You can always go shopping for stuff now and then keep it in a hoard. And then when you get bored, go to your board hoard and then they're ready. I always give great advice here. <laughs> Ooh, I smell marshmallows for some reason. Oh, it's my chapstick. Let's get into it, I'll stop now. I have my beauteous clipboard here. First idea, turn something, anything, into a chalkboard. This idea centers around a very specific product that magically turns anything into a chalkboard. A chalkboard in a can. You can spray this paint onto just about any surface. Be a little creative with what kind of items you convert into a chalkboard. It could be a, 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 a water bottle or a fan. That would be weird. A vase. Thrift store finds. A teapot. This is potential. This is magic, okay? I think. I've actually never used it. First we create the chalkboard, then we create the chalkboard art. I like that, because it gives you double activities. Hours of entertainment, depending on how easily entertained you are. <laughs> the thing that I've chosen today... That was an elbow fart. <laughs> It's a cookie jar and this came from a thrift store. This thing is massive man Like how many cookies could you put in this thing? It's got a picture of a plate of cookies and some flowers and then a note that says baked with love from mom um, Cool, let's update it Ugh. All right, I'm going to wipe this thing down and then get into painting So let's do that. Okay, cookie jar has been painted. It went from a grandma's friendly cookie jar and um, suddenly it looks like a cauldron. <laughs> It's not very friendly looking. What do they do with cauldrons? Cook up body parts and stuff like that? I don't know. What is that big smudge right there? What, what, what is that? Uh, whatever. Also, I did get a lot of paint in the inside, so I won't put naked food in this. Phase two of this is <coughs> decorated with chalk. I opted for chalk pens because just straight up chalk, it gives me the creeps, the feel on your hands when you use it. <coughs> It's so dry and then your fingernails scrape it and oh I hate chalk so I got chalk pens even though these are wicked expensive why are they so expensive I don't know possibly because I had to get every single color Ugh. Oh, they all have to be individually activated oh I need a bag for these look at this very convenient supply bag shop MariahElizabethMerch.com the time is here to start decorating this, so let's do that. It's 
finished. I think it's quite cute. It's very lively. It's giving me Halloween vibes, um, which was not my plan or my intention, but eh, I'm not mad at it. I spent way longer than I should have on it, considering it's meant to be wiped off. That's kind of the point of a chalkboard, you know? You just, you keep changing it. So I probably shouldn't have put so much time into this because I'm gonna hate myself when I wipe it off. I may never. But I wanted to make something nice for you guys. Chalk markers are not the easiest thing to work with. They're definitely not easy to layer and it's quite annoying. <laughs> but I got through it. So go ahead, pick up something random, turn it into a chalkboard, activities for days. It's fun, okay? Moving to the next thing, design your own graphic t-shirts. What you will need for this one is cloth, cloth, shirt, sweatshirt, and you'll probably have to shop for this one. Boom. DIY t-shirt transfers. And I know they do this a lot for like special events on the picture. It says future Mrs. Grant. Oh, that's supposed to be for somebody's wedding. But you can just use it for fun to decorate your clothing just as like an art activity, right? That's how we are gonna be using it. Ideally, you should be using cotton or a cotton poly blend. You will also need a printer, an inkjet printer, and an iron. Pick an image of anything you want and put it on a piece of clothing and it's yours. But I'm gonna take it a step further, predictably. I'm going to create the graphic that I use to create the t-shirt. <clears throat> I have my iPad here and I'm gonna be using the app Procreate. What am I gonna draw? Oh, I know, I've got it. I know exactly what I'm gonna draw. Um. yourself something funky. I finished drawing my little monkey balloon animal. <laughs> Where did that idea come from? I don't know. Also, it's making this face. I don't know what it is with me and drawing animals with that face. So now all I have to do is print it on the transfer paper. Got it. The print did come out pretty nice, I would say. Stop. Now it's the scary part, because this is where things go wrong. Basically what you're gonna do is cut this out, get a nice clean cut pretty close to the edge. Now for a decision. I think it kind of goes with this tie-dye vibe. Gonna put it there. Let me get my iron. I can smell, it's, it's heated up. It smells like fire hazard. Now for the ironing and <laughs> It's moving. Oh crap, crap, crap. Hold it on there for a little while. Go up and down, back and forth. I hope this works. I'm gonna be quite sad if I don't end up with a tie-dyed balloon animal t-shirt. Let it cool, just... And then carefully peel off the backing paper. Just carefully, carefully, carefully. Oh my gosh, this is stressful. Okay, oh wow. I think it looks pretty darn good for what it is, you know? I can't speak to the durability of this because I haven't washed this yet, so I don't really know how it holds up in the wash. You probably want to be pretty gentle with it to keep it looking nice, if I had to guess, but... Take that off. I love it. This shirt, in my opinion, is better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And moving on. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Are you, are you? Yeah, no? Okay, I just wanna take a quick break. As promised last week, I have new products to show you guys today, and we'll continue to have new products out every single Friday until the end of November, so. Also, we're doing a weekly giveaway, so make sure that you sign up for the mailing list on the store website if you want to be entered into the giveaway and have a chance to win some new merchandise. Okay, Yay. this week's set of merchandise is all about characters. For example, straw berry. Look at this green pocket. We have character hoodies. Not one, not two, not three, but four different character themed hoodies. We have the classic Pickle the Dinosaur, our little sweetie Georgie, and what we call the Grateful Monkey. I'm in love with all of them. So freaking cute. These are super high quality hoodies. They feel amazing. Each of them have a fully embroidered patch of the character on them. Funky strings and different colored pockets on the front and then they each have a different printed detail that goes with the character. Seeds on the hood, pineapple arms, and the 
Classic Pickle Polka Dots. These are my favorite hoodies I've ever owned. <laughs> in addition to the hoodies, we have a ton of accessories as well. Themed scrunchies for each different character, a Grateful Monkey and a Georgie fanny pack, pickle and Georgie themed socks, different character phone grips, oh my gosh. Just go to the store website to see everything because there's a lot. As always, make sure you check your order page because the shipping times do vary. And let's get into the next art thing to do when you're bored. Next, make art on your mirror. Your mirror. 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 The main ingredient we need is clearly a mirror. It's, it's like, like I'm, I'm not alone. Anyway, this is a, a nice cheap mirror from Walmart. I'm gonna hang it in here because actually I filmed a video recently and I had a mirror in here and it was like kind of convenient. It's kind of nice to have a mirror near, a mirror near. So I picked one out for my room in here, but you know, it's incredibly plain and basic. I've noticed that it's been kind of like a trend for people painting on their mirrors. I think it started on the planet called TikTok. <laughs> Sometimes I just surprise myself with how old I sound. Originally, I thought it was like kind of weird because it's like, okay, it's a mirror and now you're painting on it. Doesn't that like take away a little bit of the function? Technically, yes, but you hold back, okay? You don't paint over the entire mirror, obviously. Then so you can't see yourself anymore. This is the real piece of art right there. I'm still gonna keep it functional, but also spice it up a little bit, little something. Let's paint on the mirror. watched my last video, um, you will recognize this and let me apologize for the same art in back-to-back -back videos. I'm sorry. I just couldn't get this thing out of my head. It's the Galacticat and I don't know what it is, but I just wanted to do it again. I just like it and I'm sorry about it. Bam. He gained a few pounds, I think, in the new version. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? You are still beautiful. He's a cat in the galaxy and he's got dizzy eyes. I guess we'll never know what his feet look like. I have yet to draw those. This was fun and interesting and I would recommend doing it because you know, it's one of those things where you don't want to take it too far. So it's an excuse to do something small. And oh, what's next? <coughs> Ow. Moving right along. Bean art. <laughs> oh gosh. Bean art. It sounds really kind of lame, honestly, but give it a chance. This idea came from online. I will link in the description where I found it. This person creates these super cute animal bean art things. It's kind of like pixel art. It looks easy, but time consuming. You can use your own creativity, your own style, and the results are really cute. So I think that this fits perfectly with the kinds of activities that I look for what you will need for this. Beans. Different sizes, different shapes, lima beans, pinto beans. This person that I'm referencing actually uses pieces of cardboard. I'm actually going to use a canvas board. I just feel like it's going to provide us more structure, give more support to our beans. So the first step, you're gonna wanna choose what image you want to create and you probably want something pretty simple. You're not gonna get a ton of detail out of this. That's not the style. And then sketch it out on your surface. Hi, I went through this entire process. I did the whole thing. I spent a good amount of time on it, not gonna lie. I hate it so much. It's ugly, it's messy. I just can't look at it. And you can still see the background behind everything and it's just, it's really, really messy. I like to do this though. This is kind of fun. But I'm still committed to this idea. I'm not going to let something like bean art defeat me. 
Mm -mm. So I am redoing it, but I'm gonna change a lot of the process. For attempt number two, yay, yay, we love redoing things. I am changing the size of my canvas. I have chosen to do a portrait of one of my favorite little sweeties, Pickle the Dinosaur. I'm gonna take my beans. I am going to roughly spread them around on my sketch and figure out how many beans I want for different sections of the portrait. And then I'm going to separate them out and then to use a spray paint and I'm gonna spray paint all them beans at the same time. I'm thinking that this is going to give me neater results and hopefully avoid this disgusting mess of unpainted edges and overlapping colors. Second thing I'm gonna do different is I'm actually going to paint the canvas. And I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, it's gonna be real quick, but I think it will help to have that color on the background so that you don't have this white popping through. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and glue all the beans and hopefully be surprised at the be beauty of it all. <laughs> we'll see. And here is my bean art portrait of Pickle the Dinosaur. <laughs> I do think that this is an improvement, especially close up. It doesn't make me want to vomit, so that's good. I'm happier with the neatness of it. I'm sure there's gonna be all those people saying, oh, the first one was way better. Oh, you did worse, actually. From a distance, they might be about equal. This one may be even a little bit better from far away, but I hate this one with a passion because of all the messiness, and I just can't deal with that, so I think that this is better. I definitely like the process of this one much better. It was a lot less frustrating. So if you try it, I would recommend doing it the spray paint route instead of trying to paint on beans. Don't underestimate the bean art. Beans, beans, they're good for your art. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed these activities. These were definitely longer activities. The very original video I did like this, I did like a ton of shorter activities, but they've gotten, I think, progressively like longer and longer and more involved, and I've done fewer in each video. Let me know what your opinion is if you prefer the quantity versus quality or vice versa. Ultimately, I am happy with pretty much everything that I made, so it's a good day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye.